الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین وعلى آلہ وصحبہ اجمعین The topic of this episode is what are the collective qualities of an Islamic da'i and mubalik. Of course, the da'wa is more effective if it is through an organization. The da'wa starts with a single person. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started the da'wa alone. But when people accept, his wife accepted Islam first, his friend Abu Bakr accepted Islam then, then his slave Zaid bin Haritha accepted Islam, then his cousin, young boy Ali ibn Abi Talib accepted Islam, Abdullah bin Masood accepted Islam, and Bilal, and Miqdad bin Aswad, and so many, Uthman, and Ibn Awf, and Ubaidullah, Talha, and Zubair, and so many others started accepting Islam. So, then you have a group of people with the same faith. Jesus Christ had his disciples. Moses had friends who accepted Islam. He had Joshua with him. He had Harun with him. He had Caleb with him. So, when Islam is presented by prophets and messengers, an organization comes to, into existence. A group is formed. A society is formed. A civilization is raised. Organization is very much important. And that's why Islam says that there must be an organization. And the dawa is dawa is done in jama'a. Dawa is done in congregation. That's why Allah said in the third surah of Quran, Al Imran, ayah number 104, There must be a group of people among Muslims. Making dawa of goodness and khair. Yad'una ilal khair. There must be an ummah. There must be a group. What does it mean? Dawa should be collective. And resources have to be pooled. Dawa needs money. Dawa needs resources. A da'i and muballigh needs money. He needs transportation. He needs literature. He needs books. He needs cassettes. And all those means that are required uh, from time to time to extend the dawah, to reach the people. So it is a collective effort. He has to live in a society and the dawah is made collectively. And then this newly formed organization of Muslims who say yes to the call of the Prophet or the messenger of the last messenger, they form a group. They form a society, they form a community, they form an association, and they choose a leader. So Islam believes in al-jama'a. Islam believes in pluralism, in, in collectivism. Islam believes in organization. And every organization 
must have a leader. So a dawa organization must also have a leader. No country can run without a president or a prime minister. You cannot think of an army without an army chief. You cannot think of police without a police chief. You cannot think of a business institution without a boss. Not only that, if we look into ourselves, we cannot think of any activity of our body and body parts without a leader ordering us. And that is our brain and our heart. Those are our masters. Those are our leaders who tell us what to say, what to do, what to act. They, the brain and heart, they command our fingers, they command our hands, our legs, our tongue, our lips and our eyes. They command to close the eyes. They command to open the eyes. So leadership is a must in an organization. Now, the Dawa worker develops an attitude, a quality to be a good member of that organization. He listens and he obeys. He says, Samiana wa atana hufrana karabbana wa ilayka al -masir. Yes, we heard. We shall obey and we are seeking your forgiveness. So, sam as sam wa ta'a, as sam wa ta'atu. You see, to listen and to obey, these are the two basic qualities for a dawa worker in an organization when the organization is fully de dedicated to dawa. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.